Ready for church? Ready? I put that in the bulletin and on the screen. Yeah. Actually, Thank you. You can't do that. It's the bear. Okay. I'm going to uh, get myself one of those. You can bolt it. It's in the bullet. Yeah. It's on the back of the announcement. All right. On the Memorial Day reading, it should be right on the screen. Okay. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. This is for us all to say. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, from everlasting thou art God. <clears throat> The years of our life are three score and ten, or even by reason of strength, four score. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Let thy work be manifest to thy servants, and thy glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord, our God, be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us yea the work of our hands establish thou it god our maker god most holy Thou whose love envelops man Everywhere we see earth beauty And the wonder of thy plan For a life of peace and meaning In the lives of all mankind Thou whose mercies are unending Grant us strength and faith to find. God our Savior, God our Father, Thou whose wisdom is above, All the knowledge man can gather In the school of life and love, We would learn to trust thee fully, for the guidance that we need to fulfill thy will our duty to be christians thine indeed heavenly father we give thanks to be your people to know you and to listen to you so that we might be the way we, your people, should be. We give thanks for this day, a day of, of, of memories and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is my song, O God of all. 
all the nations a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. This is my prayer, O Lord of all earth's kingdoms. Thy kingdom come, on earth thy will be done. Let Christ be lifted up till all men serve him. And hearts united learn to live as one. Oh, hear my prayer, thou God of all the nations. Myself I give, thee let thy will be done. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is good to see you this morning. I hope you're happy to be here. Uh, me and Pastor Mark was talking early this morning about joy and hope and just um, a place to be um, is here. Uh, so I welcome you this morning. I, as you, I, does everyone have a bulletin? I hope you do. Um, one of the things that caught my eye first thing some of you might yeah i mean i do the same thing so don't worry um there's a, a message that's given and, and there's some little things in it that i take home with me i remember you know uh let me just do one i remember one where i preached a sermon as to as a youth pastor one of my earlier 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 sermons okay and i did a video clip of of seinfeld over and over in their segment, they had this one segment, and it was, these pretzels are making me thirsty. It's the very last. You remember the, uh, and, and the whole bit was, these pretzels are making me thirsty. And so, uh, you know, it was about thirsting after God and how God supplies, you know, he quenches our thirst. That was a whole bit. Okay, and so whenever pretzels are talked about, or someone says, "Man, I'm thirsty with these pretzels," that sermon pops in my head every time. Now, there's some sermons that don't. I'm honest, okay. But last week, I said, if you have your bulletin, we talk about tasting. Remember, I oh no, I didn't do it. Okay, <laughs> they all blend together sometimes. Wednesday, I did a bit. Okay, so this almost goes with the bulletin, okay? Remember in the bulletin we have our announcements, and one of the announcements is that pastor does this bit called Hello Again Wednesday, and usually it's between 10 and noon or something like that that I do every Wednesday, and this past week the bit was about food, and it was about taste, and I did another video clip, which was from my one of, I gotta say my favorite show, Everybody Loves Raymond, and it was a bit where Marie, the grandmother and the mother, uh, she decided to go on a diet. And so for Thanksgiving, she made a tofu turkey, which means it was a bean curd bird. It looked like it. It was a funny, funny bit. And uh, at the end of the bit, I quoted the scripture, taste and see that the Lord is good. So as I'm folding these, these bullets, it's like, wow, I just did that on Wednesday. <laughs> okay, it's just my, 
Pastor Mark, it's my own joy. It's my own hope, okay? <laughs> the, the Lord is good. Taste and see. So I pass that along to you. You guys might walk away today and go, all I can remember about what he said was taste and see the Lord is good, and I can prove it right here, along with the rest of your announcements. Are you ready? The rest of your announcements are uh, uh, on Wednesday. Speaking of everybody, uh, hello again Wednesday. I always, at the end, I always say, please, Come to Bible study on Wednesday at 4 p.m. here at Culver City. We go downstairs. We have all the things that we do that's that's safe, and, and we enjoy. We're in the book of Exodus, and if there's people that ever uh, watch our video, because I see, I see the mistakes that are made. I made a mistake in, in one of the songs, on one of the last verses. I made a mistake on their, their slides. that We have slides every Sunday for welcome. I hope you see them talking about some of the things for our welcome. One of the slides is, hey, we have a Bible study on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Unfortunately, the mistake is it says we're in the book of Matthew, which we are no longer in the book of Matthew. We are in the book of Exodus. And uh, boy, did we have a doozy this past Wednesday, and it was great. So come on out Wednesday at 4 p.m. If you cannot join in live on the Zoom that we have, and we're going to continue to keep doing that Zoom, allowing people to join in on our Bible study. What a great avenue. 4 p.m., and then on that one little thing for the others, I say, you know what? If you cannot make it here or if you cannot join here, catch it at a church near you. And people that are ready for the, for the uh, They, oh, he, they will be ready for the test. Uh, and and, and I, I fear when a teacher gives tests and I don't have my cheat sheet along with me. So if you have any ideas of cheat sheets for the book of Exodus, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come and learn Wednesday at 4 p.m. Or be here next Sunday, 1045, as we uh, just celebrate and worship. And you can also watch. We, have, we actually have people on the phone right now. A big welcome to them as they join faithfully on the phone. And, and we provide that service also so that people can join for free on the phone and listen to our sermon right along with us. And if they give me their email, guess what? They actually saw the reading that we had first thing in worship, that Memorial Day reading. They also know all the songs and stuff, so they sing and worship right along with us. And it is the same with anyone that is watching live on Facebook. I will do the same thing that way so that they can join into worship. The kids right now, they are doing, they are still doing Jonah. They did Jonah and the fish uh, and had a great time. They even had a visitor within their group last week. And this week they're doing Jonah where the worm comes and Jonah just has a problem. And so they're going to learn about how God still takes care of us in every situation. That's what they are doing this morning with theirs. This Thursday and Tuesday, um, I have nothing lined up. I, have, I apologize. I have been having... Uh, uh, meetings, and I've been having uh, uh, appointments uh, for, I do have a surgery that will be coming up. It's kind of, uh, uh, and so uh, I, they kind of messed up to Tuesdays and Thursdays, but this week we can do Tuesdays and Thursdays, one to three, come and go as you please um, with your computers, with conversation, uh, and enjoy maybe a cup of coffee. Um, on Thursday and Tuesday between 1 and 3. There's other things within the announcements where you can contact the church and uh, be a part of, of uh, all the things that are taking place. Maybe even catch that Hello Again Wednesday. Also in your bulletin is the new prayer calendar because as someone walked in and said, wow, June is almost here. It is. It is uh, two days away. Tomorrow is the last day of May. And so we will start our new calendar with a prayer as we pray for everyone, pray for the ministries, and pray for missionaries. They're all listed on there as a reminder as we pray. Besides, please pray for each other um, as you remember. And uh, there also our prayer requests are in there also. If I have forgotten something, I am very sorry. I do want to welcome each and every one of you. I am so glad that you are here. Let me do one last, uh, two last things. I'm going to do a fatherly thing, and I'm only going to do it for a couple of weeks. 
and I will hopefully get less and less aggressive in the thought process of it. But this is what I'm going to say. On June 15th, the governor is going to open up California pretty much completely, okay? And, and uh, I do know from the news that almost, almost half, not quite, about 44% of, of Californians have been vaccinated. And so on June 15th, here's what we are going to do. If someone walks in and they do not have a mask on, smile and say hello. If someone walks in and has a mask on, you will still smile and say hello. We will not do like the world and fight and argue. We are going to do the opposite. We are going to be a godly people that come in and worship together. And so I'll make that announcement for just a few weeks. And then as a fatherly thing, I will stop and hope that we um, cause you want to know what my joy is taking those signs off of the pews that say, sit somewhere else. And that's my joy. And to take them off the bulletin bulletin boards and actually have bulletins that might say, Hey, guess what's happening in church rather than, Hey, uh, whatever. That's my joy. But at the same time, and I'm going to do, and we're going to go probably into it. Just bear with me for a moment. Because we are going to, ready, love one another. And we are going to love them like God loves us. And we are going to do our best. And I know sometimes we'll make a few mistakes. The better thing of, of the world versus us is God will forgive us if we ask him in making our mistakes. Please come in. And be loving. I'm not saying that we're going to be hugging on each other. Please don't, don't take it that way. And I will say this. Also be respectful. If someone still doesn't want to shake your hand, don't be offended. Smile. Say hello. Your masks are coming off. You might have to do like me. I, 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 have, I have altoids or whatever they're called. You got to have some breath mints now. You got to smell good. That mask is going to come off pretty soon. Okay? Uh, you know what? I'm glad you guys are smiling. There's a joy that takes place. So that's how I welcome you. One last thing. As we give, I, I really don't want to forget this. Sometimes I do it in different areas of, the, of, the, of the, the day. But, you know, as we give of our tithes and our offerings, oh, thank you so much. We are, the church appreciates what has taken place. It's giving us opportunities to, to give to other to, uh, to ministries that are taking place here in California with the association. It gives us an opportunity to give to, to uh, missionaries. And we have been praying for um, uh, uh, Corey and Abby and their three kids as they are ministering in Botswana in the oh, central lower portion of Africa. And so uh, there's things that take place with what happens when you give um, of your tithes and offering. And so it is very much appreciated. Thank you. Not that you're just giving to a church, but we give back to God. And so do it with a cheerful heart. Do it with that smile I was talking about as we give to God. And thank you very, very much. It is a time where we get to have a joy of continuing in worship. Pastor has the joy, joy, joy down in his heart. <clears throat> Open your ears, oh Christian people. Open your ears and hear good news. Open your hearts, O oh loyal priesthood. God has come to you. God has spoken to his people. Hallelujah. And his words are words of wisdom. Hallelujah. God has spoken to his people, hallelujah, and his
God's words are words of wisdom. Hallelujah. He who has ears to hear his message, he who has ears, then let him hear. He who would learn the way of wisdom, let him hear God's word. God has spoken to his people, hallelujah. And his words are words of wisdom, hallelujah. God has spoken to his people, hallelujah. And his words are words of wisdom, hallelujah. Israel comes to greet the Savior, Judah is glad to see his day. From east and west the peoples travel, he will show the way. God has spoken to his people, hallelujah, and his words are words of wisdom, hallelujah. God has spoken to his people, hallelujah, and his words are words of wisdom, hallelujah. We fall down, we lay our crown at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Is the Lamb. No more fear should dry our tears at the feet of Jesus. Grace abounds to all who have found the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the land. Before Pastor Mark uh, and, and Christian uh, lead us in worship of uh, a, a song of for prayer, there are things that I will remind you not only of the prayer calendar that is in the bulletin, there's also another page in there, both sides, that is the uh, requests that we have, that we remember um, throughout the week. There's many on there that we are remembering through, throughout the week uh, for uh, health reasons, for uh, financial, for home, all the stuff that takes place within the lives of, of the people. Talking also about the missionaries, we talk about our country um, our city, our state, and as things are going to be happening, it, more and more we should pray about what has taken place. Uh, not to take sides or anything like that, take God's side as you pray. And so um, we want to remember the many requests that we have, and they are changing. There are things that, take, that are taking place on there. There are things that um, still need conversation about what is happening, uh, good and bad. Um, and there's ways to look at things. Uh, uh, just some, let me bring out a couple, just if I may. Uh, Jerome uh, did not have the surgery, but other things are taking place within in his uh, situation. And so uh, I will say, I was telling Sister Susan to in our, in our prayer, we're thankful that someone is there caring for Jerome up in Van Nuys. And so we want to remember him. There are uh, uh, Phyllis who is in... Uh, uh, a home right now for uh, rehab or maybe for, for the time being. Um, you also have, and I bring Phyllis up, one of the reasons to pray for her, she's about to turn, I believe, I won't say her age, 
She has a birthday coming up this week. One reason to always kind of, you, you remember people. So we celebrate, God, thank you for the life of this individual. Another year has passed. Right behind me is another one who is a Christian. His is this week also, where he reminds Connie and I how old he is or how old we are as we celebrate. Understand what we're celebrating individuals in lives as we pray, and, and it comes out that way. You will notice, on, on um, it, obviously close to my heart, uh, not only is it Christian's birthday, but it's also my dad's birthday the same day. Celebrating my dad, but more than that, you'll notice he's one of the changes in the, in the prayer request. My dad has been having some major chest pains, and so they're monitoring his heart blood flow and stuff like that. So there's things that we want to remember. And the list goes on and on. If there are things on your heart this morning, um, I during the week, there's, I don't know, it's like a lightning bolt. Sometimes it just hits me a certain way to pray for those who have raised their hand throughout this, this service. I remember you uh, throughout this week that you, there's a special need on your heart. If there's something where you need God's um, help, or you're praising God, or you're uh, whatever the need is, if you would raise your hand, I will remember you, especially during this week. During this week, I would especially be praying for you. Thank you. Um, and I, I do remember everyone, but uh, like I said, there's just something that is inspired as I pray throughout this week, and I would encourage you to do the same. Uh, sometimes when we uh, do raise hands that we uh, look around and see our brothers and sisters, our family members that, that need prayer especially, besides what is on the list. So I'm going to ask Pastor Mark to come and lead us in worship in this, uh, this verse here as we, before we pray. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Let us pray together. God, we thank you for loving us. And we just, we pour out our heart to you with our love right back, God. But we thank you for the greater love that you have, not only in loving us, but in truly knowing us, God. And so here this time, we worship you. Not only do we worship you, but we do, we, we look at our requests that we have. We have the requests upon our hearts. In knowing us, God, we are so grateful that you already knew everything. But we join together as a family, as your children, praying for one another, lifting one another up, remembering all the things that um, we might have forgotten within the week, but we come together and are reminded of, yes, let us join in prayer for this, God. So we just cry out to you. God, we pray for those who have health issues. You already know we ask an anointing of your Holy Spirit upon their bodies that, that, that uh, more strength more may come, that uh, uh, a healing might come in such a way that brings uh, comfort or whatever, God. We pray for their health. We pray for situations of home and, and uh, shelter, God, that you will care that much for us. We pray for even our finances. 
both for the finances that we need to live day to day, which is reminded of us of, of the prayer that is taught, God, how you care for us in such a way, but we pray for the finances that are provided for that living. We also are so grateful that we can show our love in giving back to you for your ministry, for your kingdom. May our eyes be wide open that we see the the results. We see some things that are taking place because of the giving that we have given, God. Not to pat ourselves on the back, but to give you more and more glory on what you are doing with what we have, God, that we give back to you. We pray for the sacrifice of so many missionaries. If we were to just start listing them, we could. But we especially remember Corey and Abby and the kids that are in Botswana. God, we are, we are grateful that, that you have uh, upheld their heart of, and their courage and their strength in a place that some of us would never, ever think of going, God. But there they are. So we ask an anointing of, upon them a blessing upon them. God, bless them in, in a great way. And we are also reminded, God, of a gift that is given to us that just comes across uh, as a reminder this weekend. We thank you for our freedom that is a gift. We, we look at it, God, as a treasure. But we know through the truth of freedom and treasure, there is a greater gift and we hope to not take for granted what you have given us. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the most precious gift that we could ever have. We realize, God, that that gift was not free, but he came and died for us. It was his sacrifice. We thank you, God. Then it reminds us of those that have uh, served, brave men and women, who have faced hard battles for us to have freedom today, those in the past and, and those that have fallen. We, God, we are so grateful that because of what they have done or what they are doing, that we have a, a, a nation where we feel protected, a nation where we feel comfort. And for those that are doing it, God, we say thank you. And for those that have fallen, especially, we are reminded and say thank you. We ask, God, that families that remember their loved ones, that you would anoint with a blessing upon them, touch upon their hearts. Again, God, we are so grateful for the sacrifice that you have given. What a great example to give your, that your son gave his life for us. We are so grateful because it brings the opportunity for our forgiveness to have a life with you forever. God, we ask that you'll just accept the, the, the praises that we have throughout this service. And at a time where, where words are spoken, we ask that our hearts will be in tune to you and that not just grow closer to you, God, but we will grow and thrive in a spiritual growth within our lives with you. Help us to have a greater understanding. And then in all of this, God, we give you glory and honor. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Psalm 116, and I'll be reading verses 15 through 19. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord 
now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord, join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Thessalonians. New Testament. Oh, the New Testament, yeah. And I'll be reading um, from chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this way we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the down of the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Sometimes as we are uh, within the sanctuary early in the morning and, and uh, Pastor Mark and them are, are practicing and just kind of getting everything lined up and stuff and uh, uh, things happen. And every once in a while, the computer decides to do its own thing. And so uh, uh, and I always, whenever there's changes, I always click save. And sometimes if I don't click save and the computer does its thing, as in what it does is it kind of not freezes up, but what we're seeing right here, it's all you see in the back and it's hard to do other things and make adjustments. And so sometimes I have to shut that whole program off and then bring it back. And if there's something I didn't save, then all of a sudden I realize I didn't save it when I don't see it there the next time. And so I'm going to ask Lauren before she does it, is there a video following that screen? Oh, yes, I did save. And so to introduce this video, um, on, uh, on Memorial Day weekend, there are always, the president usually goes to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, makes, their, makes a speech, and for me, through the past years, and I, I haven't had as many as some, but through the past years, one of my favorites is President Ronald Reagan. And uh, so um, he, sometimes when he, when he speaks these words, it's, to me, it's like, wow, yeah. I, I, uh, I find a comfort in remembering what he's about to talk about. And so I put together a small clip for Memorial Day weekend 
that's going to lead us into uh, more of uh, what lies ahead, especially in Scripture. We are a nation under God, and I believe God intended for us to be free. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery, with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, their lives ended in places called Bella Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Port Chop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. They add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Sometime back I received in the name of our country the bodies of four Marines who had died while on active duty. I said then that there is a special sadness that accompanies the death of a service woman. They were never quite good enough for them. Not really. We can be. Because what they gave us beyond our powers to repay. So when a service man dies, it's a tear in the fabric, a break in the hole. All we can do is remember. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our minds as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We go to the death we can never repay. All we can do is remember what they did and why they had to be brave for us. At the end there was a quote from Abraham Lincoln that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. In giving that speech, Abraham Lincoln was honoring over 620,000 soldiers that died in the Civil War. See, Memorial Day weekend started very shortly after that. 
See, a lot of times we kind of connect it with the many wars that, that uh, maybe even uh, uh, we saw or even that President Reagan rattled off a few. You got to remember, after President Reagan, there was still more stuff that came. We live in a world where war just seems to go on, and, and, and we as a people, we always think, oh, we're going to end it, we're going to end it, we're going to end it, and it, it does not end. And there are people that are fallen. You know what? One of the greatest things as, as, uh, for me is that in, in honoring that the Abraham Lincoln began to speak about and that they began to, it, it was not Memorial Day, it was called Remembrance Day a day to remember. And then that, I, I, 19, I can't remember what it was, and then it changed the name, but it has always been remembering the fallen that gave up everything. For what? Think about it. You know, we live in a world right now where they're arguing over the Civil War, but they're arguing it in such a, a way that it deals about money rather than understanding that, guess what the Civil War really did? Unfortunately, it, it had brother against brother. That's how it goes, right? Uh, family member against family member. The North against the South. In our own country. And, and, and thousands, thousands, thousands died. For what? For, my, for me, I'm just going to say, this is my thought. That, that, that they died for all people to have freedom specifically at that time i mean it's an easy it's an easy uh 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 i don't even know what, what it would fall history class it's an easy history class they fought the civil war for what for freedom for african americans so that they would no longer be slaves and that put people against people And if you were to look back through history, we are way better off because some men, some, as President Reagan said, some boys, and I bet you if you really went deep in history, you'd find out that probably some women were passed away during that time frame also. Because guess who, who, would, who would take care of people? And so... For me, uh, probably one of my greatest problems is, uh, and as a teenager, I kind of struggled with it because uh, my dad rejoined the army and we went to Georgia, to the south. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what, when you go from the far north to the far south, you are reminded that you are from someplace else. And then we went from there to Belgium for my entire high school years, which was tough. I'm going to tell you why um, I was kind of not, uh, I was not uh, from the beginning all happy about it. Connie flirted with me right before we were leaving, <laughs> which made me like her even more, okay? <laughs> but I actually left in the middle of my, of my ninth grade year, which meant when you go to a brand new school, in the middle of your high school year, everyone has already clicked up. Everyone has already had their friend groups together. And you come in in the middle of, where do you go? I was not a happy camper about the military. But over the years, I have learned so much more about what the military has done across the world. And so I'm grateful. My dad was a, what you call a lifer, you know, as a veteran. He was in, before I was born for the few years, you know how you served so many years? He was in for those few years, and then he went in for a very long time after that. Connie's dad served a very, very long time too, and served during the Vietnam era, and saw many things. I actually, because I'm old now, some of you can laugh, okay? <laughs> I am old, old, as in my age, and I have friends. Because they call that the military brat thing, because of the military, I have friends that got out of high school and joined right away and did the same thing, did their 20 years. Well, guess what? When you're up in your 50s, 20 years after high school puts you in your 40s. So, yeah, they were lifers. I have some that actually, while, while they were serving, 
I believe, passed away in service, not because of battle, but some, I believe, was natural causes and stuff like that. But then at the same time, when you look at the military, you're, you, we have seen what a bomb in a road will do. And for me, it, it's, yeah, I, I, I have a heart of, what I'm saying, I have a heart of honor. Did I join the service? No. <laughs> but man, I honor those that have, have fallen and have served. And when I say fallen, you look into what the lives that they've done, as I talked about the Civil War especially. And then you go on to, you know what? As we, please bear with me. As you think of war, you, if it had not been for those who gave their lives, think what Hitler would have done. He was already bad at what he did for many years. See, some people in school, they only, they only get that little tidbit. Here's the wartime. Well, guess what? Years before the war, Hitler was bad. And so people during that bad time got together and created a coalition of, see, not just Americans, but others to prevent an evil to take place in the world. And so, yeah, you honor them. You know what? Uh, maybe some of you have, have uh, believe me, Hollywood does no justice with Hollywood movies. You know, I'm a Rambo fan, yeah, but there was more to it than Rambo. And when you actually watch, like, the History Channel, man, a tear comes to my eye. To see boats coming up to a beach, and the bullets ripping across, and kids just barely getting off the boat and dying for what? Man, it tears, it tears my heart up. That's what I was talking about with Ronald Reagan. When he was talking about that they lost two things, the life that they were living at the moment and the life that was so far ahead of them. And when I look at that and those words together, I go, wow. That means so much because what they did, even on my worst day, I have it great. Memorial Day weekend, excuse me, Memorial Day, remembering even from the time of the 1800s to now, it's not just a, we, and I, I do it too. I say it. Man, I hope you have a great, ready, long weekend because of Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. I hope you enjoy your day off. The worst part is, man, the banks are closed. <laughs> but Memorial Day is way more than that. And like I said, it's more than just, ready? It's more than just America celebrating on this day. Always the last Monday of May. It's so easy to remember. Not the date, but it is the last Monday in May. And so it's easy to go, wow, I know this is what's coming up ahead. And so I began to, for me personally, I, I just start to remember individuals. But before I start to remember individuals sometimes, I look back at some of the things. I'm just going to give you just a couple, ready? In, in uh, South Korea, and the reason I'm saying South Korea, because like I said, it touches my heart. My dad was in South Korea during his time. In South Korea, their Memorial Day is June 6th, so close to ours. It's National Day of Unity and Armed Forces Day in Italy. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to pause all through this probably. One of, my, one of my great joys was standing on a, on a huge hillside overlooking uh, a, a, a bay and seeing the, the Seventh Fleet. Isn't that what it was called? The Seventh Fleet? Seeing that down there with all the, dis the, the, the destroyers and stuff. In Italy, National Unity, November 4th. Britain, Britain celebrates also on, they have a Remembrance Sunday, which is the nearest Sunday to November 11th. And what they do is they celebrate the end of World War I. I'll tell you what, because watching the History Channel, Talk about a devastation that came to a country that we really, well, 
I enjoyed it. I went there twice. <laughs> and then I'll do my last one. Belgium. Armistice Day. We, for three years, celebrated Armistice Day, celebrating the fallen soldiers. So as I say that Memorial Day is more than just the weekend or anything like that, what do we do? I always like the what do we do thought process. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Actually, actually I changed my mind. <laughs> I, I, I get things and I prepare all slides and I prepare my message and then I go, I changed my mind. We're still in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to start at the very beginning. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. I am writing to God's church in Corinth and to all his holy people throughout Greece. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. You know what I love about Scripture? I, uh, this is a letter written to a church in Corinth, but it, it went outside of the church walls in Corinth and made sure, just so you know, it's for all these other people too. And I'm not doing it just alone. I got my friend Timothy right here with me. And then it goes on with this. Verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is our merciful Father and source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we are able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. See, on Memorial Day weekend, when things happen and, and situations are, and you're, remind, you're reminded, just as it is, the day of remembrance, as you're reminded of what has fallen in the past, and as I talk about veterans, this, may, this is why it's so close to me, as I talk about veterans, there is a need for comfort even today. Even today. Ah. Uh, there is a lady who needs comfort. Her husband served in the Navy. And he, I could, I sat in his room and heard many stories of what it was like on the ship. And how it hurt his heart sometimes. And COVID-19 came in and wrecked his body and he passed away. He knew where he was going on his last breath, which is a joy. But behind is a family that needs comfort. And so as I look at this scripture right here, this scripture, even though it was written to a church in Corinth, even though it was written about the people in the area of Greece, even with that, it is a reminder to me that it is God saying the same exact thing to a people today. It does not stop that people need comfort when troubles come. He comforts us in our troubles. Why? So that we can comfort others in their troubles. Let me say this. I talk about having a bad day, and there have been many, 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 many bad days. Okay? That required comfort. And each one of us have a bad day that is different than someone else. And you'll look at it in different ways. And, and, and for me, uh, if my plan is not going right, it pretty much makes a bad day. Uh, and, 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 so I'll say this one of my in my head one of my worst days was on a Sunday okay on a Sunday I'm downstairs and there's if you when, when you go downstairs and have coffee and donuts not today we're not at June 15th yet <laughs> but down the road when you get to have some coffee and down the road when you get to have a little donut, or maybe down the road when you get to sit with a family member of the Church of God and eat a meal. I don't even know where I'm going with this. 
I'm hungry. I had a bad day. Yes, that's right. I'm downstairs, and there's a mirror downstairs. And I walk by that mirror like, man, I am beat red, and I feel very, very warm. And, and that was a day where individuals, see, here's the thing about comfort. People care about you. You, you got to understand where comfort is coming. You know, people care about you. They're placed in a position, and, and I was told to go home. And I'm telling you right there, my plan was to what? To enjoy a great worship service. At that time, I didn't have to do as much as what I'm doing. Uh, at that time, when Brother Bud, who is, I believe, listening right now, miss him very much. I think of him every time announcements are made. And, and so there was so much here, and end of it, go home. And so my day was messed up right away. I didn't get to go to church. I didn't get to preach my message. There's a silver lining. God had someone in place for me already. There is a silver lining in my bad day. I look, it's easy to look at it now of how comfort comes. But I can remember sitting in that, actually laying in that hospital. And every time that I could probably speak, what Connie, Connie will tell you, hey, I got to go. I'm going to do a wedding in a cornfield. <laughs> and I've got to be on a plane on Tuesday. <laughs> that was my whole plan. And it was all messed up with, with all the needles and blood and, and, and testing and ah. Uh. But guess what? God got me out of there on a Tuesday and on a plane, and I was, ooh, it was still kind of rough. And so I, I look at things as, what a bad day. But you know what? People gave up so much more for me that even, like I said, on my worst day, there's comfort. I can look back and I can see comfort. And so, you know what? When someone else is sick, it's easier for me to give comfort. Um, my, my, I have changed. Not because of that day, but because of Connie, I'll say. She helps my, guide my compass on changing to not be so rough, to be more considerate of the situation. Are you understanding that when you learn something, you can pass that comfort on? God has given... Now I'm going to go greater than Connie. Because... Well, actually, God works in Connie as he works in other people. But God is the one who teaches comfort to give to others. Maybe that's what we should be, not maybe, that is what we should be doing. As you come across things of remembrance, where people are having such a hard time on certain things. Some people may have even lost loved ones. Uh, yeah, the, another bad day. This weekend was very close to the weekend my brother passed away in a car accident. You know, as you're getting ready to have a, a great Memorial Day weekend and you get a phone call in the middle of the night, it's terrible. There was comfort there that came our way. And then you learn to give comfort to others. I know I spoke about this one other time where there, it was the worst day. Actually, it was the worst year as a youth pastor where I believe it was between 12. It was like 17 kids. It was a lot of kids that passed away in one school year from dropping in the hallway to the saddest for me was a, 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 a mini bike accident where two kids that would come to youth, youth group, played chicken, and accidentally hit each other and passed away. But you learn, I'm telling you, there's, there's still sad holes in my heart, but I have learned to bring comfort to others because in the, the worst day that I ever have, God comes in, and then when I see someone else having a day just like mine, they know how to bring comfort. So what God does for us, we give comfort to others just like God has given to us. I'm about to get ready to close. That verse 5. For the more that we suffer, and I'm going to put it in my head, the more bad days I have, the more where it just seems like the worst of the worst. But as I do it with God with me, the more we suffer for who? For Christ. See, I, I want to make sure we get that in the context. 
It's not all about you. It's not all about me, but it's about who we are living for. And in that living for him, there are going to be situations in our life. But if we continue to live for him and we suffer for him, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. There might even be hard times for the church ahead. And so I find joy knowing that no matter what takes place here, God's got it. And so I'm going to walk every step with him. And I will look for every shower of comfort that he's going to have for us. I'm excited. Two, two things. In Psalm chapter 82, verse 3 and 4 says, Give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. What it's saying is do justice, justice to those who are afflicted and those who are needy. Rescue the poor and helpless. Deliver them from the grasp of evil people. I, I read that scripture as I, was, as I was thinking of comfort and and things that are happening. And, and when we talk about memory, can you imagine uh, growing up with no family? So I love this scripture. Why? Do justice for them. Take care of them. There are people who are poor and there are people who are destitute and it is our job, if God has showered upon us, aren't we supposed to shower upon them? Aren't we supposed to give comfort to them? Aren't we supposed to do what the scriptures are saying? Or are, and I'll ask you the question, or are the scriptures just written in a book that sits on a shelf and never gets a wrinkled page or never gets a, a, a page lost or something? Uh, we have hymnals here that have, have pages that are taped and why? Because it's used. And so we should take the scriptures, not just read them, not just have them for a moment, not just have them on a screen or, or on a bulletin or anything like that. We should take them and we should actually do what is asked of it. Because I do not believe God has stopped because Psalms was written in the, in the, um, in the era, era of David, about David, or David wrote them or passed them along, along with uh, uh, Moses, I believe. And, and you have that time frame. Do you think God stopped? Oh, you know what? I don't think we should rescue anybody anymore. It was just during that time frame. I don't believe that way. I don't believe that, that, that God just said, only that church in Corinth gets to have comfort. I think it's for all of us. And, I, and I, I say it for this one reason. There are people today, I had someone who, who, who uh, um, I, I'm sure they did it to a whole bunch of people, sent this, this little video and sent it out uh, via, via Messenger, Facebook or whatever. So I'm sure it went to all his friends or whatever, however many he had. It came my way. And I watched it. And I watched a man say that God was only for the Israelites the people of Israel. That's it. And I'm like, what? So then, let me take this, because where Jesus said, uh, or, or where it's written in John, what, 3.16, for God so loved who? Just the Israelites? The world, did you say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, did it say only the Israelites? Or did it say, whoever believes in him shall have eternal life? Is, so then let's rip that out. According to that video that maybe a hundred or more people saw. And how many of those hundred people are influenced by that saying that God is only for a certain people? And the man even went as far as saying, not for the Gentiles. Okay, so let's take the writings of Paul and rip those all out. Or even when Peter had to be in front, had to go to what Cornelius, let's rip that out. Was Cornelius a Gentile? At one time, I know Peter had a situation, right? right? 
where he was eating with these people, but he wouldn't eat, he would actually eat with these people over here only if he was not seen by these people over here. So let's start ripping all those things out because God is only for a certain per person. And the world today is going to start believing that because you know what? When the voice, I'm sorry if my voice is loud, maybe my voice should be louder because the loud voices everywhere seem to make the, 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 dif the difference that has taken place. Not a good difference, but the difference has taken place. They will remove comfort. They will remove peace. They will remove, start removing things, which then I'm going to say this, as in Psalms, are the evil people that we need to grasp the people away from. So we need to start showing comfort. We, we need to start showing that I believe that Jesus died for me and he died for you. And with that death, gave forgiveness to me and to you. And I'm not going to get into ethnicities because if I'm going to quote one scripture, which will never get ripped out, that God is not one of favoritism. There's neither Greek, there's neither Jew, there's neither, there's neither uh, a slave, there's neither free. And it, there's this list. Right? And, I, and I'm just paraf trying to paraphrase it. I'm going to tell you what I take from it. God loves me. God loves you. Because of who you are, made in the image of him. I don't care what your color is, because your blood is red. And the greatest blood decided to be the greatest sacrifice, the greatest fallen individual. I'm going to tie this up. Ready? We remember the fallen and what they've done and, and, the, and all the things that I spoke about, Remembrance Day and all that stuff. The greatest fallen individual was Jesus Christ. The best thing about that story, which the world needs to hear so that they can be grasped from the evil people, is not only did he fall but God did not let him stay down and brought him back to life. And there's scripture that's not ripped out that says that same power that raised my Savior raises you. Raises me. I'm excited because there is a world that needs to be removed from the grasp of evil people. And God, allow me, this is my prayer, to do it in comfort to do it in peace. Because I'm going to tell you what, most times, the abusive arguments, I don't care if you're quoting scripture, the abusive arguments, the I'm going to beat you over the head with my Bible till you believe people, does not change lives. Does not grasp people from the evil people. But the heart of God that is peace, that is right, <laughs> from the Spirit, go to Galatians chapter 5 and read what the Spirit inside of a person looks like. And I, you know what? And there's going to be places where you struggle. Mine is always patience. <laughs> but I know the Scripture, and so I'm able to pray, God, help me with my patience because it's love kindness, gentleness, meekness, uh, uh, something about your uh, uh, temperament. Uh, don't be angry. There's so much in there that will actually help a life not hang out with evil people. And Jesus did it. John 3, John 15, 13. Uh, uh, Christian and, 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 and uh, Pastor Mark, come on up. Please. That's my kindness. Please. <laughs> John 15, 13. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. A lot of times on Memorial Day weekend, um, that scripture gets read for the purpose of, you know what, look, think of the fallen. They gave their life for friends. They gave their life for you across the world. That's why I was telling you there's other countries 
that are, that, that are remembering, not maybe on our day, but they do remember the same thought process of those that have given their lives so that the world could be a much better place. But nothing compares to the one who truly laid down his life, and that was Jesus Christ. And I love it because laid down his life for friends. Guess what that makes me then? I'm a friend of God. And that's probably, even though it's it, here with Scripture, a thought process, I think God looks at it a little bit greater than that friend thing. Because Sometimes friends come and go. Sometimes friends have a division. That's in Proverbs. But a friend of God, if you have this forgiveness and you are walking with him, he's a friend forever. Actually, you're his friend forever. And that's so cool. Only because Jesus Christ gave his life for us. That's laying it down. So, as we get ready to sing this song, he, I think we're doing two verses. He cares for me. Remember how we talk about this comfort thing? Second Corinthians. He gives you comfort, gives someone else. Guess what? My God, my Savior, the Holy Spirit work cares for you and he cares for me. If you don't think that he does, it's a simple prayer. God, please help me understand. Your first prayer should always, always be, God, please forgive me because I'm, I'm messed up. I'm making all these mistakes. I'm the one who's yelling and screaming at people. I'm the one who's angry at people. I'm the one that's holding grudges. God, please forgive me. I know you, Jesus died so that I could have that forgiveness. God, please forgive me. Help me change and not do that again. And he will care for you enough to do it. And the good thing about that for me is even as a follower of Christ on the mistakes that I made, he cares enough for me that in a quick breath, a quick, quick thought, God, I'm so sorry. Man, it's so cool. I'm forgiven. Why? Because he cares for me. God, thank you for helping us to have an understanding, not just this great long weekend, not because even that we are remembering those that have fallen and given so much so that we could have just great things, a great life if we look at it, but that God you sent your son so that we could have the best life, eternal life with you. If there's someone here that doesn't have that understanding, God, allow your spirit to help change that heart, help bring that mind to the thought process of I need forgiveness and to change my ways and walk with you. God, for us also, help us to keep our eyes wide open where we might have the opportunity to comfort others. In Jesus' name, amen. I walk today in the Christian way, though dangers I may see. I will not fear, for the Lord is near, and He will care for me. No matter what happens, He will care for me. He will care for me, He will care for me, and His mighty hand will enable me to stand, no matter what happens to me. No test I face, but sufficient grace is ready for my need. When sorrows rise to obscure my skies, he proved a friend in me. No matter what happens, he will care for me. He will care for me. He will care for me. His mighty hand will enable me to stand. No matter what happens to me. We live in a place where you hear sirens all the time. And uh, I was talking about this with one of the kids on 
we had spent a day in Ontario and stuff, and and uh, sometimes you you we click things out. The helicopters that fly over constantly, the airplanes where we live, you hear constantly, and then the sirens that go by constantly. And I will be reminded today, especially, that those people need some care, probably. And I know that God gives people a spot to do it. Thank you again for giving of your tithes and offerings. Uh, there is plates in the middle, or there's plates here in the front also where you can give. Or if those that are listening online or on the phone, you can always mail them in. Or that one-click button on the Internet, and you can just give that way also. So. Uh, <laughs> I've done it. It does work. I've done it. <laughs> and you can even on that one, there's a spot that says it's a fee and the fee is so small that you don't even have to click the fee. The church will actually cover so that you can actually have a quick way to give. Okay. I am so glad you came this, mor this morning. And uh, I do hope that you do have, uh, you know what? It is a happy Memorial Day. There is joy, joy for what people have done for us. It does bring a great day. Some people are having such a great day, uh, joy. Some, this is their grilling weekend or grilling tomorrow or whatever. They're spending a time together and uh, remembering, laughing, enjoying each other's company. That is what's taking place this weekend. But we will uh, we'll do the same. We'll do our best. As we close in prayer, dear God, we thank you for the freedom that you have given us and for the price that was paid by Christ so that we could live free. We do remember today the cost of it all, the great sacrifice for freedom, but we thank you most of all for the freedom that we have in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. On Wednesday um, at 4, we'll be crossing the Reed Sea.